This is the Sanctuary Sunday School, and as always, I am so glad to have you join me. This week's subject is giving from a generous heart, and you can find the text in the book of Exodus in the 35th chapter, and also in the book of 2 Corinthians in the 9th chapter. Giving from a generous heart, I love this lesson because by nature, I am a giver. And when you think naturally of giving, you think that the person who is receiving is the one being blessed. But I can tell you firsthand that giving takes your blessing, the blessing of the giver to a whole nother level. You just you just attract an abundance of blessings that are unbelievable when you give. And so that's why I love this lesson about giving. And I love to read about how God's people gave so willingly. Now we see here that the children of the children of Israel are in the wilderness of Sinai. And this was after they had been delivered from Egypt and God commanded Moses to build a tabernacle. Now, a few weeks ago, we were studying about the building of the temple and the specifications of the temple and how everything was set and how it was supposed to look. Now, even before the temple, we've gone all the way back to right after they came out of Egypt, when they had to build this tabernacle, which was a temporary worship place for God. And just to sneak in a little lesson there, it shows me that even when we're going through our wilderness, even when we're not quite there, God is requiring worship and he has a standard of worship and excellence no matter where we are in our lives and even though they had not yet made it to the promised land they were still required to worship God and to build edifices so that they can go a place that was set aside exclusively for the worship of the Lord and so this is what was going on and Moses had asked the people to give so that he could build the tabernacle. And the text in Exodus says that they gave so much. Now, they had just come out of Egypt. And as we know, the continent of Africa is rich in natural resources and minerals and precious metals. So they brought gold and bronze, their jewelry, their bracelets and tablets and all of these things. And they gave it so freely to Moses. And they also had fine linens. And as we know, even to this day, if you're buying linens, you want that good Egyptian cotton sheets because it's just the finest textiles that they have coming from that area of the world. And so they had these things and they had taken them out of Egypt because they were there so long and they had these things and they just gave them willingly and freely. And I love it because as you read through it, you see them giving the finest things that they had to the tabernacle of God. And that is such a lesson to us today. We know that tithing is 10% of, of your earnings. And my father, he always teaches, he said, don't just tithe, give God a tip. Cause see tithing is 10%. But if you go to the restaurant and you get really good service and the food is really good, you'll tip 20%. And so when you give to God, Outside of that 10% that is automatically his, when you give to God out of what he gave to you, it just opens up the windows of heaven and, and he, God will pour out blessings that you don't have room to receive. And so when you look at what they gave, onyx and, and fine linens and gold and silver and bronze and the way that they overlaid the altar in fine precious metals and how beautiful they made it in this tabernacle, it shows that God is so worthy of the best that we have to offer. In our last unit, we talked about worship and just that worship experience. And now this unit, we're going to be talking about giving and how important it is to give and how we should give from a generous heart. You know, not just because I'm going to give you this and now leave me alone. I don't want to be bothered. No, we should have it deep down in our spirit, a desire to give to God, to the work of the Lord and also to others. We should have a generous heart and a generous spirit. And when we do that and when we do it without having grudges and when we do it without being angry about it, you know, sometimes when you get your check or whatever your income source may be, when you get paid and you have to pay these bills, it's like bills after bills after bills and you, you frustrated and you don't want to pay that. That's that's not the attitude that we want to have when it comes to the work of the Lord or when it comes to the people of God. We want to be like the Israelites here in this lesson. They gave so much until Moses had to tell them to stop giving because there's no place for us to put it. And not only did they give material things, they gave of their service. They gave their professional skills, their trades to build this tabernacle to worship the Lord.
Now, in the book of Exodus, we're talking about the people giving to the work of the Lord for the building of the tabernacle. When we move to 2 Corinthians, we're talking about giving to other Christians in need. That's what the, the church of Corinth had committed to give to the saints that were in Jerusalem to help them. So it's more about giving to people in need. And Paul reminded them of this commitment and pointed out that giving to people in need is an essential part of your salvation. And he also cautioned them to not give unwillingly and not to give begrudgingly, but to give freely. And he talked about that and the difference that that makes because you want to give to people because you love them and because they're in need. And a lot of times we see a lot of charity work and I've even worked with organizations. And I remember sitting on a committee, a planning session for an event and the leader of the, the, the committee, he had selected a charity that we were going to support. And I remember thinking, oh, wow, this is wonderful. It's a great charity. And then his next sentence was, yeah, we're going to support this charity because if you attach a charity to your event, then people will give and the charity gets so much money and we get more money. And for me, that made me not want to be a part of that event because it changed the entire spirit of the giving. It was him using the charity so that he could get more money for his event, as opposed to using that charity so that you could really help these people. And that's what Paul was warning about. And sometimes even in church, you see it. And I always reference the fact that my dad is a pastor. And sometimes I see people and they come to the church and I want to buy something for my, for the pastor's office. I want to buy the pastor a robe. I want to buy the pastor this. And it's kind of like giving for attention or for prestige and not really giving because the church has need of it. And when you do that, when you give your alms, right, to be seen of men, you have your reward already. But when you give from a generous heart, it's like planting a seed. And I teach about giving a lot. And this is the example that I use. When you have a garden and you plant a seed, you plant this little bitty seed, right? No one ever goes and digs that seed back up out the garden and gets your seed, get your seed back. You don't do that. You leave that seed in the ground and you let it grow and it grows into a garden or a tree or whatever it is that you plant it and then it becomes something that is a blessing to you and into your life. So that's how it is. And you don't just give to people because they're at a certain level or because they can give something back to you. You give to them because they need it. And what that does, it positions you to be blessed with what you need. So you don't always look to get back what you gave from the person that you gave. You just give from a generous heart because the Lord told you to give. And one thing that I love my mother, she always taught me, she said, if someone crosses your path and they're in need, you have a responsibility to help them. You cannot make the judgment on whether they deserve it or not. If they cross your path and they are in need, you have to help them because that's why God allowed them to cross your path. And you can never go wrong by helping people. And I have found that to be true. And you never know what that means. I may come across somebody who just needs maybe 20 or 30 dollars to get the work for the week for the week. That's their need. So I meet their need. I may be in need of healing from a terminal disease. And God meets that need because I met that need. See, that's that's what giving from a generous heart does. That's the level of blessings that giving from a generous heart reveals. It opens up to you because you love people. You love God's people and you do what God tells you to do. When God allows someone to cross your path who is in need, that is a call for you to help that person. And when you do that, you position yourself to get, to get blessings from God that you literally don't have room to receive. Just like going back to the Old Testament with Moses, they gave so much until Moses had to tell them to stop giving because there was no place to put all that stuff. That's the place that we want to be. That's where giving from a generous heart positions you. And Paul also referenced the fact that if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. So if you're stingy and if you're selfish, yeah, you'll always have what you have, but you'll never experience an abundance. You'll never get everything that really should be coming to you if you had given the way that you were instructed to give. A generous heart 
is a beautiful heart. Paul went on to say that the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. You should be able to give with a smile on your face and not angry, not frustrated, not thinking about what you're going to lose because because you gave. When you give, you should think about what the other person is going to gain because of what you give. And you should be happy for that person when you see someone excelling and doing well and you know that you invested in them and you know that you contributed to them. It should just give you a joy deep down inside of you. I've, I've worked in youth ministries for years and now I'm at the point where some of the kids that I would go and buy donuts for or go pick them up and teach Sunday school to their adults and their family finishing up colleges and they have good careers and they have beautiful families. They don't owe me anything. I don't want anything from them when they walk in and I see them. I'm just like, thank you, Lord, because I love what God did in their lives. And I love the fact that God used me to be just a small part of their lives and see what the devil will do to you is he'll make you feel like I give, I give, I give, and nobody's giving me this. And, and you start to want to get things back from the people because they're not grateful. Forget about all that you give because the Lord told you to give and you give to anyone that's in need. And if you can do that, if you can give from a generous heart, not a heart expecting appreciation, not a heart expecting reciprocity, but a generous heart, a heart that gives because it's right to give, a heart to give because you love God, a heart to give because you love God's people. When you do that and you give from a generous heart, the Lord will bless you and the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow with it. You can walk in joy and love and peace. And that's why I think this is such a beautiful lesson, giving from a generous heart.